is a unique place. You're at the Piedras Blancas Elephant Seal Rookery. This is the largest mainland elephant seal rookery in the world, home to about 25,000 elephant seals. But that's a bit misleading because the elephant seals actually live in the ocean. They don't live here. They do come ashore twice a year, and when they come ashore, all depends on their gender and their age uh, and where they are in their life cycle. So what we're going to see today is a bit of a change of the guard, if you will. We're in a transition between two happenings, two things that are going on on the beach. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as we get out there. With respect to visitor management, if you will, <laughs> we're more reactionary than we are management. Uh, we just ask visitors to adhere to a some very simple rules. We're in no drone zone. Uh, the drones do disturb the seals, uh, and uh, we don't we don't want to upset the seals. It is a federal crime to uh, interfere with marine mammals, so we, we try and protect them. Visitors are allowed over the fences and down onto the beach. Uh, this is my starting my third season out here now, and I have never seen anybody try and scale the fence. <laughs> I've seen people do some inappropriate things, like throwing pebbles and doing things like that. And you try and just you know bring them up to speed in terms of why that's not a very good idea. The one place we do end up in management is during the breeding season, um, which starts in, in December, breeding and, and birthing. Um, down at uh, by San Simeon Pier, all the males that get beat up or just can't get in here because they're not bad enough, they go down there. You know, some years there's a lot, some years there's not so many, but they go down there just to recover. Recover. And that's a public beach. And I, I actually know. work on her speech. That's my winter. Yeah, um, I did, I've done it too, but not yeah. recently. And so we tend to um, build, um, we get gather drift, gather driftwood, and we make huge kind of yeah. corrals yeah. to delineate because people literally don't see them. It's yeah. the funniest thing, as big as they are. And they don't realize that if you have one male that's coming in from the water, he's lost in battle, and you've got one up here on the beach. Their testosterone, they're still in a fighting mood. Yeah. And to try to explain to people that you do not want to be between two males. They're not gonna attack you, they're just gonna go over the top of you. You're tiny, mm -hmm. you know, you mean nothing to them. And dogs, etc. You know, so we really, we spend a lot of time. Get back to your question about, you know, how much do we do in terms of, of management? We do have some resources that we can help mm -hmm. assist. We're here for interpretation purposes and to help visitors understand what they're seeing and to behave appropriately. They don't like to take the advice from us, which is free. We can bring in the state park rangers who will give it to them. It's a bit of a heftier price if they do that. Uh, we also have some other resources. But I would say overall, from my experience, and these guys agree, uh, I've had 99.95% .95 good behavior by the visitors. Uh, once in a while, somebody will be smoking and, you know, they, they don't even realize. So we're at, you're actually at a very, very good time because the, the elephant seal cycle really starts at the end of November, 1st of December. When the big bulls start coming ashore on the beaches and they're coming ashore to claim territory or geography and they will begin fighting amongst themselves to determine the hierarchy. Who's in charge, who's in control, who's gonna control what areas of the beach. Those guys that do gain control, we call them beach masters. Uh, and they're going to hold on to that territory because in the first few weeks of December, the pregnant females are going to start coming out of the water to have their pups. And I know this is going to sound weird, but literally the pregnant females that are from this rookery will come ashore within a couple of months and have their pups on all of these beaches. When I say this rookery, the rookery is about eight miles long and incorporates about 40 beaches in here. So what you're going to see are two beaches here. Uh, and there are many, many other beaches, a lot, most of which don't even have public access. Yeah. Okay. They're very, very well hidden. Uh, the seals tend to prefer that. The seals are somewhat reclusive, uh, and they don't really like human contact. So that's one of the reasons that they tend to have their rookeries on islands. They go, they go so far as most of their rookeries are on the ocean side of the islands. They don't even want to face the land. So uh, they're somewhat reclusive. So the females will come ashore because they're going to have their pups. The males will try and gather those females up into his area of the beach. He wants to create what we call a harem. A harem is 20 to 50 pregnant females that that male bull is going to watch over. And he's going to watch over that group and protect them from the younger males that may try and get in and mate with them too early, protect them from other bulls that may try and intercede and, and take and steal them away over into his area. 
And all we want to, although we want to think that his intentions are altruistic, they're not. He has one thing on his mind. <laughs> and he wants to be the first one to mate with her. So she'll have her pup on the beach, and she will after she comes out of the water, within about three to five days, she'll have her pup. And she'll nurse that pup for about 30 days. At the end of 30 days, she comes into estrus. She's ready to mate. She's run out of milk. And the big male bull, that, that beach master that, uh, whose harem she's a part of, wants to have the first right to mate with her. And that's one of the reasons that he brought her up into his area. So he will mate with her, but she'll mate with many other males before she's allowed to get to the water. And that's really her objective at this point in time. She's been on the beach for a month to a month and a half. She's given birth. She has nursed that pup. And all of the milk that she has created has come from her own fat stores. Because while the seals are on the beach, they're fasting. They're not eating. There's nothing in these waters for them to forage for. And it's not part of their foraging migration. So she's hungry. She's also lost a lot of weight, anywhere between a quarter and a third of her own body weight. And then at the end of all that, if that wasn't bad enough, she's had to put up with the romantic advances of all these male, bull, male elephant seals. So by the time she gets to the water, she's exhausted. She's just physically completely beat up. And even though from that mating, she does have a fertilized egg, what she doesn't have is the nutritional ability to, to support both herself in a pregnancy. So she has the ability to hold that fertilized egg in suspension. It's called delayed implantation or... Diapause. Diapause. Uh, and she'll hold that egg in, in, in suspension. Literally, the egg is not developing, although it is in her uterus, while she goes out on her first foraging migration of the year. And she will swim out. She's a uh, mature female. She'll swim about halfway to Japan. They like to forage. Females like to forage in the deep trenches of the North Pacific, north of the Hawaiian Islands, and roughly half the distance between here and the Japan Archipelago. And oh, she wow. will. There. So there's a couple of other things that are happening around the rookery at this time, also. As the young pups, after they are born, might wonder, well, what you know, mom would go find something to eat. We have no idea who dad was because that was one of 20 seals the previous season. We don't even know, even know if it's on the same beach. In one of Mother Nature's first attempts at humor, when the elephant seals are born, even though they're going to spend their life in the ocean, they don't know how to swim. And so job one for them is to learn how to swim. And that's one of the reasons that we think the seals like this particular area of the coast. It's got these volcanic rocks that fall off the side of the side. And during low tide, those rocks form tide pools that are nice and calm and protected against ocean waves and currents and provides a good environment for the seals to teach themselves how to swim. So after mom disappears, the pups will band together in what we call wiener pods. Uh, these are pups that have been weaned, uh, and they will spend their time playing together and working in the ocean together to learn how to swim. After about a month to a month and a half of teaching themselves and playing with their buddies, a combination of their biology and hunger sets in, and they will head out into the ocean on their first foraging migration. they got a big job ahead of them now. They're going to have to figure out what food looks like and then how to catch them. Uh, during the first three years of their lives, elephant seals on their foraging migrations only have about a 50% chance of coming back to the beach. Hmm. So there's a, high, there's a high combination of predation on these smaller seals. Uh, when they are out there in the water, they are, some of them are more successful than others in terms of identifying food and being able to capture it. Uh, but the fall off curve for young seals is very, very high. Yeah, that's definitely a man. And then these little tiny ones are ones that are Oh, these little tiny ones. Well, those could be in the 